live on Long Island, obviously, and the south shore of uh, Long Island especially used to be all uh, wetlands, uh, salt marshes uh, within the estuary that um, essentially protected the island from uh, environmental calamities such as uh, storm floods. And as we now know, latest after Superstorm Sandy, uh, salt marshes are uh, the most effective um, barrier to storm floods. Uh, protecting human settlements behind them and unfortunately we have lost most of our salt marshes in our estuary and uh, we have essentially only a few isolated patches left. We need to be doing substantive things in Albany also and uh, a lot more work needs to be done with regard to uh, the environment and our, our natural resources. I just wanted to mention one bill that is directly on point on what we're doing here today and that is, I've had legislation now for several years that uh, would outlaw the use of methoprene. When we uh, work with, uh, for instance, pesticides such as methoprene or resmethrin as a means of um, a vector control, mosquito control, typically these substances have been tested a few times in isolation whether they have um, unwanted toxic effects on other organisms um, after all you know humans or, or model systems such as mice the problem is we bring out these substances into nature and not only one but many and we do not understand at all how they may interact right and how this sort of combined insult on the communities may affect the various non-target organisms um, and now this dramatic decline in insects um, uh, essentially all over the world is, is really alarming. It is showing us that something is going fundamentally wrong and that we need to pay attention to all these potential interactive effects which we have not been investigating at all to this date. Methoprene is classified as an insect growth regulator. In basic terms, it destroys uh, the larvae of insects. Uh, they're targeting mosquitoes, of course, but it, being broad spectrum, it has collateral damages to both non-target insects and the world of crustaceans that occupy a, a salt marsh, for instance. Um, dragonflies, for instance, which are uh, principal predators of mosquitoes, are also at risk. Uh, they undergo larval stages themselves. Uh, we're knocking out these populations of insects. So beyond the uh, direct kill effect, when we uh, eliminate uh, basically the myriad of insect life in a salt marsh, it has serious implications. Uh, New York Times uh, recently reported uh, a story on the insect apocalypse associated with uh, pesticide applications. You know, these are real concerns when we take out dragonflies uh, by virtue of eliminating a food source, even if it's not a direct kill effect, um, we're, we are eliminating predators, uh, non-target insects, and, and having serious damages to the bay ecosystem. The, uh, the county applies uh, larvicides in the early portion of uh, the, the onset of the, the warm weather season. Essentially, uh, I believe May 1st is when they identify the um, application of larvicides. Uh, in particular, we're concerned about the wholesale application of methoprene. Uh, or trade names Altacid. Uh, this is a, uh, classified as an insect growth regulator. Ultimately, it, it uh, disrupts the development from larval stage to flying mosquitoes. Uh, it interferes with hormones that would allow for that, ultimately, that development and transition again from larval stage pupae into adult flying mosquitoes. Uh, the county sprays roughly 20,000 acres uh, per season. And these applications are uh, really uh, following uh, tidal cycles. So on the full moon and new moon, when the, the waters are flooding these marshes that we're standing in, you know, ultimately the areas, uh, you know, the, the helicopter will deploy uh, on a given marsh um, and like mowing the lawn, go back and forth, uh, roughly 50 feet above the marsh with uh, outriggers uh, spraying methoprene directly into the marsh. Uh, its intent is to uh, be sprayed into the waters, uh, in shallow waters, uh, have direct contact with the mosquito larvae. Uh, humans uh, start uh, employing a blanket approach and spraying pesticides such as um, um, methoprene and resmethrin over the um, salt, marsh, salt marshes. And not only mosquitoes are targeted, but um, 
essentially all organisms in the marshes and they may be uh, more or less susceptible to these. Now all these organisms which have similar life starts, life histories as mosquitoes with for instance aquatic larval stages um, are prone to be affected by the pesticides which are used as mosquito control and uh, for sure they are. Now this means is that we also decimate the natural predators of mosquitoes and uh, impact the natural functioning of these ecosystems uh, which we have been uh, greatly underappreciating so far. I was working at the Kalers Pond Audubon Center in Santa Mauritius and when I was trained uh, I started surveying around that area for dragonflies and one of the things which actually that I was um, thinking about because we have some federal parks and I was living in an area where they were spraying for mosquitoes and I would hear the helicopters going over. But what I found out is the few federal parks that we had, I found out they're not allowed to spray in the federal parks. And one of them was the William Floyd Estate and one, another one was over by Smith Point. And what I was doing was I was actually looking for dragonflies in uh, William Floyd Estate and I found some in there that I didn't find outside of the park. And some of them were some of the rarer species. And because my concern also was the chemicals being dropped uh, on the coast, on the coastline, because we do have some dragonflies that live uh, all along the coast and the brackish water. And believe it or not, I didn't find as many dragonflies in those areas. And it, the dragonflies, they live in the water from one to six years. They only live out of the water for like three weeks. So if they're in the water for six years, they would be exposed to those chemicals being dropped on them year after year. And they probably wouldn't survive. And they actually, they do eat a lot of mosquito larva. I, I, I was telling them earlier, they should be dropping dragonfly larva and not, uh, not chemicals. But, um, but I did find a difference in surveying dragonflies from in the federal park to outside the park where they were spraying for mosquitoes, that there weren't as many or diverse, uh, diversity of dragonflies. So we have um, uh, many insects which have similar life cycles um, as mosquitoes, for instance dragonflies, we have um, hydrophilic uh, water beetles, we have shoreflies, um, ephrodites, and uh, these are uh, uh, or these fulfill, of course, important roles in the salt marsh ecosystem, and in particular, a uh, dragonfly larva, the aquatic dragonfly larva, are predators of, of the um, aquatic mosquito larval stages, uh, and the adult dragonflies, for that matter, are important predators of adult mosquitoes. They hunt them down in the air. Now, uh, methoprin as a larval site um, targets the aquatic larval stages, and it is um, a juvenile hormone mimic. In other words, it interferes with the natural development of um, insects and it prevents the adults from emergence. emergence. So it, it, it interferes with metamorphosis in, in the flies. Um, that means that it interferes with the development of all aquatic uh, insects, such as, for instance, the dragonflies. So uh, the methoprin, which is uh, used to kill off uh, uh, or control the mosquitoes, uh, inadvertently, uh, uh, in inevitably, essentially, uh, uh, targets the, their predators. And um, this uh, uh, obviously does not make much sense. We do have some dragonflies that live along the coast. One of the ones that I had just recently found was the four-spotted pennant. It actually likes the brackish water. So I found it actually on the beach and it actually came inland to the vernal ponds. So it's using both. So we have dragonflies that will be near the coast. Um, we also have a seaside dragonlet that also lives in the brackish, by the brackish water and will come in inland also to the ponds. With respect to uh, biodiversity, salt marshes are on par with tropical rainforests. I mean, the myriad of species they support and the, and the population sizes. I mean, everything down to the uh, microscopic uh, larval mosquito to uh, many of the birds that are, uh, you know, occupy these marshes for habitat. Uh, they're critically important that we manage them that way. You know, the assault of uh, pesticides, you know, roughly every two weeks 
on these marshes, just hammering the life out of them with respect to insect life, you know, is really problematic. And with respect to uh, pond building, you know, eliminating these shallow pans uh, to control mosquito breeding, uh, it's a misguided practice considering that we, we need to manage these marshes for coastal resiliency. The um, management of these wetlands with pesticides and alteration of waters has really been driven about nuisance control. And that's reducing mosquito populations uh, for comfort level around these communities. Uh, using these pesticides, particularly methoprene, eliminating the biodiversity in this marsh, uh, excavating ponds uh, for purposes of reducing that breeding, you know, this is counterintuitive to coastal resiliency. You know, we've got to change the way we're doing things. We've got to be science-based. We've got to manage these systems for ecological health. As a lifelong Long Islander and credentialed uh, marine biologist, you know, I can tell you today's uh, bays pale from decades ago, and we've got to do everything in our power to reverse this trend. The use of methoprene in killing the biodiversity in the salt marshes is having a significant impact, long-term impact. Uh, the degradation of these marshes for coastal resiliency, uh, flood attenuation, these are serious matters that, you know, we need uh, direct action today. Now, if we uh, would like to have uh, healthy coastal wetland systems which um, are able to function from a human perspective as efficient uh, storm flood protectors, we need to have healthy wetlands. So we need to um, uh, put in our efforts and understanding what promotes um, salt marsh ecosystem health and necessarily this entails uh, trying to limit our insults into these systems and to um, essentially control our use of insect control measures. Uh, by all means, I think we all agree, should there any be some really nasty um, population explosion of mosquitoes or any insect of some sorts, um, yes, we should probably, you know, take some measures, uh, but that does not mean that we should uh, use a blanket approach and regardless of any uh, perceived necessity, uh, uh, spray these toxins over our marshes. As a lifelong waterman and former baykeeper, I know these waters. I've seen the degradation of them over the decades. Methoprene is a big part of it. We can't assault these wetlands with this pesticide week in and week out. We've got to start doing things differently. A cease and desist on the methoprene applications for the benefit of marsh ecology and coastal resiliency.